Ahlan Musahlan, and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. Intermediate Arabic with your instructor, Laura El Albani. In this lesson, we'll be learning the singular demonstrative pronouns in the Arabic language. We will be focusing on Hadha and Hadhihi. This is part one. Learning objectives. By the conclusion of this video, the student will be able to, one, understand what a demonstrative pronoun is, two, decide when to use hadha or hadhihi, and three, know how to determine if a noun is masculine or feminine. Okay, let's begin. So what are demonstrative pronouns? Demonstratives are words such as this and that used to indicate which entities are being referred to and to distinguish those entities from others. In the Arabic language, the word we use for demonstrative pronoun is ism elishara. There are four singular demonstrative pronouns. They are hadha, hadhihi, thalika, and tilka. Let me repeat them once again. Hadha, hadhihi, thalika, and tilka. In this lesson, we'll learn the differences between hadha and hadhihi. In part two, we'll focus on thalika and tilka. Hadha. Hadha means this in the Arabic language. It is the masculine form and it's used with masculine nouns. Look at these examples and examine the differences between them. Hadha Mataron. Hadha Mataron means this is an airport. Hadha El Mataru. Hadha El Mataru. This airport. Hadha Hua El Mataru. Hadha Hua El Mataru. This is the airport. Let's go through those once again, starting with Hadha Matarun. Hadha Matarun means this is an airport. It's a full sentence. You have Hadha plus an indefinite noun. The indefinite noun will always take nunation or tenween at the end. In the second example, we've added an alif lamb in between hadha and the noun. Hadha el mataru. This is no longer a full sentence. It's actually just a phrase. You'll notice that el matar loses nunation and only takes one vowel marker at its end because it's definite. In the third example, we've added hua, the word for he or it, into the mix. Hadha hua el mataru means this is the airport. Again, it becomes a full sentence. The word el matar only has one vowel marker because it has an alif lam at the beginning and is definite. Let's take a look at another example. We'll use the word safir. Safir means minister. Look at example number one. Hadha Safirun. Hadha Safirun means this is a minister. Example number two. Hadha as Safiru. Hadha as Safiru means this minister. Example number three. Hadha Hua as Safiru. Hadha Hua as Safiru means this is the minister. Look at the first example. Hadha Safirun. This is a minister. This is a full sentence. It begins with the ism elishara, Hadha, and is followed by an indefinite singular noun. The indefinite singular noun, Safir, takes nunation, or tenween at the end, and is pronounced Safirun. In our second example, Hadha as Safiru, this minister, we no longer have a full sentence, but merely a phrase. It begins with 
the Ismail Ishara, Hadha, and is followed by a definite singular noun. The definite singular noun, as Safir, loses nunation and only takes one vowel marker. In the third example, we've added Hua in between Hadha, the Ismail Ishara, and the definite singular noun, as Safiru. And it means, this is the minister. Again, it's a full sentence. Now let's look at Hadhihi. Hadhihi, just like Hadha, means this in Arabic. However, Hadhihi is the feminine form, and it's used with feminine nouns. Look at these examples and examine the differences between them. Hadhihi sayyaraton. Hadhihi sayyaraton means this is a car. Hadhihi as sayyaratu. Hadhihi as sayyaratu means this car. Hadhihi hiya as sayyaratu. Hadhihi hiya as sayyaratu means this is the car. Let's look at example number one again. Hadhihi sayyaraton. Here we have an ism el ishara, hadhihi, and a singular, indefinite, feminine noun. It ends with tamar buta, and it contains nunation at its end. It's pronounced hadhihi sayyaraton. This is a car. In the second example, we have hadhihi, the ism el ishara, followed by a definite, singular, feminine noun. Hadhihi as sayyaratu is a phrase, not a sentence, and it means this car. In the third example, we have hadhihi, the ism el ishara, with hiya, the pronoun that means she or it in Arabic, and a definite, singular, feminine noun, Hadhihi he as sayyaratu means this is the car. Let's look at another example. This time we'll use ta'ira. Ta'ira means airplane. In the first example, we say hadhihi ta'iratun. Hadhihi ta'iratun means this is an airplane. In the second example, we say hadhihi a ta'iratu. Hadhihi at ta'iratu means this airplane. And in the third example, we say hadhihi hiya at ta'iratu. Hadhihi hiya at ta'iratu means this is the airplane. Anytime you want to use the word this, you need to ask yourself, should I use hadha or hadhihi? How do you know? Ask yourself, is the person or the thing being talked about male or female, masculine or feminine? So the rule is, if the person is male or the thing being talked about is in the masculine gender, use hadha. If the person is a female or the thing being talked about is in the feminine gender, use hadhihi. So you're probably asking yourself, how do I know if a word like table or chair or car is masculine or feminine. We talked a little bit about this earlier. The first thing you look for is, does it end in a tam or buta? If it ends in a tam or buta, most of the time you assume that it's feminine. Not all words that end in tam or buta are feminine, however, particularly plurals. Secondly, look at the word itself. If the word itself has a feminine meaning, like mother or sister, which in Arabic would be om or ocht, then it's also considered feminine. And the third way we decide if it's feminine or not is, did the ancient Arabs tell us that it's feminine? For example, words like shems, the word for sun, dar, the word for house, or yed, the word for hand, are feminine, simply because the ancient Arabs told us that it's feminine. 
So by now, you should know the difference between hadha and hadhihi. They both mean this in the Arabic language, but hadha is the masculine form and it's used with masculine nouns. And hadhihi is the feminine form and it's used with feminine nouns. And this brings us to the end of our video. In part two, we'll look at the difference between Valika and Tilka. Thank you for watching.